يا نفس إن لم تظفري لا تجزعي Brothers and sisters, count with me for a moment. What I speak to you now is of something that is number one, one of the most important acts of worship in the life of a Muslim. Number two, one of the most neglected acts of worship as well. Number three, one of the toughest acts of worship out there as well. One that demands immense training till my heart, your heart is finally positioned in its domain. What is it? I speak to you about something called al lillah humility before Allah. Wait, I know you've heard this term before, but it's not necessarily in reference to something you physically do, nor is it at all limited to salah, prayer, khushu' and prayer, no. Rather, it's an inward state that envelops your heart around the clock. It's, it's to walk on the earth where you truly feel that you are in need of Allah, helpless without the assistance of Allah, paralyzed without the aid of Allah. Have you felt it before? It's when you raise your head from prostration, from sujood, only to realize that your heart is still prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is to buy, to sell, to converse, to socialize with others, whilst your heart quietly calls out to Allah saying, Ya Allah, oh Allah, don't leave me to my own devices. I am at your mercy. Oh Allah, pardon my shortcomings. You see in me what other people don't see. Oh Allah, I have not worshipped you as you deserve to be worshipped. Have you felt this, my dear brothers and sisters? This is a value that sits in the heart, not necessarily something you physically do. Consider with me the words of Imam Ibn Qayyim who said, speaking about al khushu lillah, humility for Allah, saying, دَخَلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ أَبْوَابِ الطَّاعَاتِ كُلِّهَا I tried coming into the doors of worship to come closer to Allah through every one of those doors. فَمَا دَخَلْتُ مِنْ بَابٍ إِلَّا وَرَأَيْتُ عَلَيْهِ الزِّحَامِ فَلَمْ أَتَمَكَّنْ مِنَ الدُّخُولِ And every time I came to one of those doors of worship, wanting to draw closer to Allah, I found that door congested with people. I, I just couldn't enter. What is he saying here? He's saying that the, the popular acts of worship, like prayer and fasting and charity and da'wah and learning and Qur'an and their likes, alhamdulillah, they're practiced by so many people, right? They're practiced by so many, so it's quite hard to compete with them. All of those doors were congested, he said, but then he continues. Until I came to a door, the door of humility and bankruptcy to Allah. فَإِذَا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ بَابٍ إِلَيْهِ وَأَوْسَعُهُ And I found that this door was in fact the quickest door to Allah and the widest of all doors to the pleasure of Allah. وَلَا مُزَاحٍ فِيهِ وَلَا مُعَوِّقٍ And to my surprise, I realized that there was no congestion at this door and there were no barriers. There's no one there. He says, فَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا أَنْ وَضَعْتُ قَدَمِي فِي عَتَبَتِهِ فَإِذَا هُوَ سُبْحَانَهُ قَدْ أَخَذَ بِيَدِي وَأَدْخَلَنِي عَلَيْه he said, all I needed to do was just place my foot inside and at once I was taken by the hand and allowed to walk inside. Did you get the essence of what he is saying? Getting the outward form of worship on point is quite easy. But that inner state of khushu' desperation and humility and genuine need of the King Allah Ar-Rahim, according to Ibn Al-Qayyim, it is, this is the missing jigsaw piece in the lives of the masses and that happens to be, to be the peace that makes all the difference and that happens to be the peace that makes all of the difference. Honestly, it's not about appearances and eloquent sermons and carefully crafted Islamic posts. It's about that secret relationship that exists between you and Allah which nobody else sees. And a single atom's worth of this quality is dearer to Allah than mountains worth of deeds that are machine-like. Practically speaking, how is this wonder of an act of worship to be attained? What do we do to attain it? Here is a suggestion. Number one, by knowing Him. Imam ibn Qayyim, he said, Man araf Allah, ahabbahu wa labud. Whoever knows Allah has to love Him. Whoever comes to know Allah has to love Him. So make an unconscious effort to rediscover the one who you claim to worship 
through the Quran, through the study of his names and attributes, and watch how khushu' within you that had been perhaps asleep in the past will slowly begin to reawaken. Yeah, this is step number one. Find a way to know Allah Almighty, and the chief way of doing that is via the Quran. That's number one. Take note of it. Number two, by thinking about him. Allah invites us to do this. Allah said, don't they look into the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all things that Allah has created? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَعِذُكُمْ بِوَاحِدَةً أَن تَقُومُ لِلَّهِ مَثْنَى وَفُرَادَ ثُمَّ تَتَفَكَّرُوا Say to the people of Prophet Wasallam, I urge you to do one thing, that you stand up for the sake of Allah in pairs or singly by yourselves, and then to think, Allah says, then think. This universe is an enormous masjid. It's like an enormous mosque that was built for your con con contemplation. And when Umm darda the wife of the famous companion Abu darda was asked, which act of worship did you see your husband Abu darda engaging in the most? She said what? At-tafakkur wal i'tibar. Contemplation and deep thought. So this is the second way of building this khushu'ah. Thinking about Allah. Put everything on flight mode for a moment, on a nightly basis. Number three, by freeing up some space in your heart for khushu'ah. That's the third way. We've already established that khushu'ah, this sense of humility, it's not an action of the outer, it's one of the heart. And with this we understand why a lot of us, we really struggle to attain it. Because we haven't left any space for it. I mean, there's only so much that the human heart can be housed to. And if we fill that house with sins and distractions and games and addictions and haram conversations and perversions and time wasting and laziness and the rest of it, how will khushu', the sense of humility, how will it ever find its place? if it's constantly being evicted by something else that's more pressing. Each and every one of us knows exactly where we need to start and what inner items need offloading. This is the third way. Make some space for it in your heart. And number four, by begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. This Ramadan, I want you to set yourself this task. Memorize these words of the Prophet ﷺ. He would ask Allah for khushu'. What would he say? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal kasal. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from incapacity and laziness. Wal jubni wal bukhli wal harami wa adhab al qabr. And I seek refuge in you from cowardice and stinginess and senility and the torment of the grave. اللهم آتي نفسي تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكها أنت وليها ومولاها Oh Allah, make my soul obedient to you and purify it. You are the best of those who can purify it. You are its guardian and its lord. And then he would say, اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge that does not benefit and from a heart that has no khushu' and a soul that is never satisfied and a dua that is not answered. Memorize this dua, brothers and sisters. Make it a task in these days of Ramadan. As millions of people all around the world bow and prostrate during this evening's taraweeh, night prayer, ask yourself, I wonder how many people at this moment are actually living this reality of khushu' for Allah? And never forget that most things in life that are broken, they end up what? Losing their value with the exception to that of a broken heart, a heart which breaks for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the most valuable gift you could possibly offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.